Hi, my name is Steve and welcome to the Seaside Lotment channel. It's time for the monthly tour. I normally do it on the 20th, but apparently circumstances have just been busy out cycling and stuff, um, and so I haven't really got down to the allotment very much. In fact, right now I think I'm only doing about 16 hours on the allotment a week, um, and that's pretty much keeping it in reasonable state. Um, and obviously we're harvesting pretty well. Well, they may be not harvesting quite as much as we did last year at this time of year and that's partly due to pressure on the salad beds and i'll show you the sorry tale of the salad beds uh on the tour and i'm in the polytunnel and it's i think it's about half past six tonight and it's actually bearable in here because you'll see in a minute i've got my roof shades up and wow does that make all the difference um, and there's really not a lot of point, from my perspective, um, having much more light in here than these roof shades allow, because in, if, you, if you don't have the roof shades on, the temperature just rockets above 100 degrees, nothing will grow, um, put on any growth. So there's no point having light if stuff's not going to grow because it's too hot. Uh, so I try and keep the temperature of about 90 degrees or something like that um, at midday. Uh, with this roof shade and it just means you know the plants are happier i'm happier in here there's a lot less watering to do um yeah everything just uh, benefits really from that shade i do take it out when it's going to be a cloudy day and just pop it back in it takes about two minutes to do so i'll show you that and we'll get on and do a tour and i'll have a quick round up at the end so i've moved as much that's in containers as i can out of the polytunnel I've got some lovely uh, sweet corn. We've harvested the first few sweet corn now. Uh, believe it or not, there is a courgette in the middle of that sweet corn clump. Um, and it still has a few courgettes on it. I've got another sweet corn here in the corner. And that's got three cor sweet corn in that little tiny container there. And we've already harvested two sweet corn off here, I think. And it's doing pretty well. So oh, let's give the overview. There we go. So let's start with the roof. So this is the roof shade, it's just a mylar blanket. It's just clipped in with these little clips here. Um, and it's brilliant, <laughs> absolutely brilliant. It just reflects out the midday sun. So really, uh, you know, during the morning, sun streams in from this side. During the evening, sun streams in from this side. So everything's still getting plenty of sun. But just this center corridor, of course, with there's not much planted anyway, uh, all the light just gets reflected out and it just keeps the temperature down. It works brill. Cucumbers still doing pretty well, although we're only getting... We, we started off the cucumber season with probably six a week or something ridiculous. Now we're down to a more reasonable two or three cucumbers a week, which is much better. Um, lots of people really interested in this Ildi or Idli. I can't quite remember which one it is. Um, it just has the most tremendous trusses on it. Now, not every single one um, takes, but just look at the size. I mean, this is a single truss. Look, and there must be a hundred tomatoes on there. It's amazing. So, this is the tomato that I inadvertently took the uh, growing tip out of. So I've got a few side shoots in growing off it. Um, and they're doing really nicely and I'm just growing the side shoots up these wires or strings rather um, and it's looking really good um, incredibly productive but it is a little bit strange because if you look at that point there for example there's two trusses coming off there um, and there's another truss coming off here so there's trusses coming off everywhere it's a bit weird anyway trumpuccinos these are still chugging along mainly we grow these for really early squashes we use them like um like we use courgettes and here's a great example of one just look at the length of that neck so that neck is like a courgette but without any seeds and then the seeds are all at the bottom there so um yeah, absolutely fabulous. And by the time you get to 
about August, these plants are pretty much exhausted and I'll just take them out uh, and I'll replace them with tomatoes, uh, which I'll keep in the pots late into the season when I take these tomatoes out. And we're harvesting these tomatoes, of course, now, and we're getting a reasonable crop off them. Um, quite pleased with the way that's going. And of course, I'm taking the leaves off, a lot of leaves off, and you can see just how much uh, growth there still is, plenty. This is the problem we're doing a tour at night. Everything looks a little bit dark, but anyway, not to fear. There's another Ildi, huge, absolutely, oh, Idli, huge trusses. I actually took the tops off these plants because I thought, well, it's just way, <laughs> there's plenty of tomatoes on here. I really don't need any more. Whether that was a good idea or not, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll try next year leaving them on and just cutting the trusses off. Um, peppers in here are all doing pretty well. There's a line of peppers all the way down here in front of the tomatoes and there's another batch of peppers underneath the trestle table and some people said well they won't get enough light underneath that trestle table well they're certainly growing some pretty nice peppers and all of these are absolutely crammed full of beautiful green right now peppers and I've got some carrots down the back, <laughs> whether they're actually going to do anything or not, who knows. Uh, but I've got some really nice beetroot uh, down the front. And beetroot is one of our absolute staples in winter, so it's nice to just squeeze in a few extra. And although, you know, this is only a single row, it's going to make a difference. It's probably, uh, I don't know, 50, 50 odd uh, beetroot there, so they're doing pretty good. And there's some other different peppers here. Again, there's a really nice crop of peppers on here. So even though I've left the trestle table on, even though there's loads of shade, they seem to be absolutely loving it. Um, and they generally ripen, I think, with heat. And so there's plenty of heat in here. So I think uh, hopefully this should be okay. Right, cuckoo melons coming on beautifully in these hanging baskets. And these are the self-watering hanging baskets, but I'm not using the self-watering because it's making them a bit too damp. Um, but I am watering them most days. Yeah, pretty good. Back. I just uh, forgot that I hadn't, <laughs> I hadn't actually watered the uh, cuckoo melons, so I did that when I remembered. Now they grow up these uh, hanging baskets but I always pull them down because I want them trailing down because when they get up into this roof they just go rampant and get a tangled mess everywhere you can just see them starting to do that up here and I just pull them out out because I want them hanging down where I can keep them under control right let's move on so I've got a lovely little bed here of brassicas so I've got some sprouts here some lovely cabbages that are hearting up really nicely. These are a mini Savoy. Some lovely kales, Aztec broccoli at the back there. Some more kales. Basically all of these are kales. And it needs a bit of a weed, but it's looking pretty good. Fantastic harvest of raspberries off here. And there has been some discussion about the needs for nets. Well, as you can see, I have got loads of raspberries on here and the birds are leaving them alone because there's just so much for them to eat at this time of year. And this raspberry bed is a bit crazy. But on another fantastic crop of gooseberries off here, again, we've not netted it, fantastic. Let's keep going round the outside. A few gooseberries left on for the birds. Share and share alike. These are, I, I did a video not long ago about the problems I was having with these beetroot. They were looking really unhealthy. The leaves were terrible condition, really awful. Uh, cut all the tops off and they've all grown back. And the leaves now are beautiful. And so they're now, they're growing again quite happily. 
and just stored them for a couple of weeks uh, whilst they put some new leaf growth on but basically saved the crop because it was going horrible same problem on some of these leaves next batch um, but these are growing really strongly now uh, I'm hoping I don't have to cut the leaves off because this, this sort of problem I've got is only on a few of them tomatoes at the back <laughs> growing really nicely even though they're kind of buried um, in beetroot leaves this is the chard I planted not long ago only last week I think and oh, it's doing fantastic it's putting on beautiful new growth excellent condition very little pest damage and I've got some lovely tomatoes here at the back and they're growing really nicely as well. I love just squeezing things in. And then this is my really early uh, brassica bed. And this was in a cold frame. And I got a fantastic super early crop off it. Um, but it's still going so well. It's just starting to go to seed now. But uh, who can blame it? It's been really busy. And uh, eventually I'll probably take it out because you know it's high value space these coal frames but I've got to have something to replace it with and for now it's the best I've got so I've got another charred bed here and again it's growing really nicely I'm really pleased with it a few spring onions this is our main charred bed that we're eating from right now and it's pretty good Bit of the same problem that I've been having on the beetroot just on a couple of those leaves but it's not so bad with chard anyway because you're pulling the leaves off all the time so not to worry and yeah what should we look at now so here we've got these little hoop tunnels and I never really know what to do with these hoop tunnels in summer um, so what I decided to do this year was put peppers in them and the peppers are loving it I've got the uh, hoops off right now because um, obviously I'm doing the video but normally the peppers are the peppers the hoop tunnels are closed and they're just standing on these blocks they're like that and actually in there I've got believe it or not it doesn't really need to be in a hoop tunnel but baby leeks which are growing really fast and some spring onions which are looking lovely as well and I've got another look for those little hoop tunnels here Let's just see if I can get some better light and here I've got some celeriac which again is growing really nicely of course they do need a little bit of water but right now I'm going to leave them open because we've got a rainstorm tonight and it's super warm so they're quite happy um, but believe it or not they have actually needed this protection and they've thrived in it because We've had some really chilly weather uh, this July. Ridiculous. So here's my uh, golden beetroot bed that we're currently harvesting from. We've got quite a few other beds of golden beetroot. Um, and here's another beetroot bed. Lots of beetroot beds around. And then these are the brassicas I sowed, planted rather, just a few days ago. And I haven't watered them and it looks like they've all taken which is always slightly nerve-wracking the first few days after you've planted them to see whether they take or whether something's got in as well to eat them but looking pretty good at the moment and we are getting a little bit of rain and of course they're loving it inside this um, scaffold netting which is providing them with a bit of shade so i've got this cold frame top on here and this is just because I haven't got around to taking it off but in the cold weather the uh, New Zealand spinach has really enjoyed having this little bit of protection and so has this golden purslane this is the bed that I had probably on the last tour um, a real big problem with what with green fly and so I cut it all back to the ground pretty much and it's all come up and it's fantastic now it's a really lush uh, pretty vibrant bed and actually it's a lot better condition than the main bed that I've been harvesting for the last 
a month while this one has been regrowing so i'll show you that in a minute another really lovely kale bed here and this is one of my other one of my many beds of golden beetroot got a little bit of problem with the leaf miner in here just need to keep taking these leaves off um but not so many so the plants are quite happy losing the odd leaf every now and then so I think now I'll show you the mess that is my lettuce situation. So I've got this bed that I decided, people say, you know, all the books say, oh yeah, it's a really great idea to interplant your lettuces with your brassicas. Well, I'm not gonna do that again. What a mess it made of this brassica bed. Lettuce has completely overpowered it. It's really difficult to manage. Look at that pathetic cauliflower there absolutely useless basically and so hardly got any crop off the lettuces either because the water stress with competing with the brassicas made them run to seed this bed's not been so bad but it's still not brilliant it's a fairly nice uh, calabrese there that needs picking but we've got so much calabrese i don't really know what to do with it and that's all side shoots at the moment we're eating all the main heads have been harvested but we just are getting so many side shoots awful lettuce bed here and the reason i'm not taking it out is because we need these lettuces we've just we're really struggling um we had a massive problem in this bed with caterpillars grubs some sort of moth grub really munching through these leaves i had to take all the outer leaves off them um they're actually still quite nice these lettuces still in reasonably good condition even though they look horrible but uh, anyway, I'll show you the new lettuces in a minute. Another New Zealand spinach bed going fantastic. And then around here, this is the main golden purslane bed and it looks really scrappy at the moment. Um, but as I say, it's kind of good really that I've got the other one that uh, is in such great condition and I think next year I'll do the same thing basically well I won't cut them back but I'll just plant a bed of golden purslane about a month later or six weeks later so I've got a succession because I mean there's still plenty of good little um, clumps on here for harvest but the bed in general is just suffering a little bit. Beautiful bed of strawberries here and this strawberry bed has been a revelation really. Um, so it's a, a ever-bearing strawberries and we're still harvesting off here. They're really absolutely gorgeous. Um, so much better than the early season ones. Down the centre I had shallots and I've just harvested those. Um, and then down the outside between, between the strawberries and the shallots I had garlic and harvested that as well. So I've had loads of stuff off there. Of course I've now got some lovely little apples. These are the first season, first apples that these trees will have ever given me. I've got cherries in the cherry in the middle and two apples. So let's have a quick look at the onions. I am really pleased with these multi-sown shallots. I don't know whether you can see the size of these, but they are giant. The plants are still really strong, so I've got another few weeks of growth in them. But yeah, I just multi zone two to three uh, shallots uh, in a clump, and they've been brilliant. I think I've lost one one station there by the look of it, but other than that, yeah, they're giant. Um, some really lovely onions. Again, these are all multi-sown. These are Elisa Craig, and they've done brill. And I've, I won't show you anymore, but I've basically just got all sorts of different types of onions in here, as well as pickling onions. Another really lovely bed of brassicas. And these are purple sprouts and ordinary sprouts. Um, Carvalho Nero and dazzling blue kale some lovely tomatoes just squeezed in at the ends 
don't know, cauliflower, whatever. Lots of stuff in there. This salad bed is my lifesaver. And this is, I can't remember what it is, red salad bowl. And it's just starting to rise to seed, but I've probably got another week or so of that and another week or so of this. Um, and so with those other bits and pieces, I've just got enough salads just to keep me going. This is a new one on me. Nice big bed of red ruble. It is a salad kale. Uh, so I've got loads of this in here. Obviously I'll be thinning this out a little bit, but uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this because this will be uh, a great addition to the smoothie mixes and uh, also to the salad mixes. So I've never had kales, uh, salad kale before. Some of my new salad beds. Unfortunately, I didn't quite have enough um, of either of these salads. Uh, this is Cantarix, I think, and that's uh, Tessie. Um, or maybe the other way around. Anyway, I think that's right. Um, it to fill the bed, so I had to put some spring onions in, which is a kind of shame because I really need salads at the moment. But um, yeah, these are growing really well and they're not far off being a harvestable. In fact, I think I'll probably take the first harvest off these in two days' time. Um, and I'll start, you know, next, next week they'll be going well. So I'm hoping that with this bed and some of the other beds I'll show you in a minute, I've got enough to see me through. This bed of Grenoble Red is going to seed. Some of these leaves are still good enough and that fact they're actually quite nice. Um, it doesn't seem to go bitter that quickly. And I've got a few here that are still hearting and there's a few decent leaves on those. So yeah, not too bad. And then this is the start of the year. My sprouts that were sown in clumps of three. And these have just delivered and delivered and delivered. Just amazing quantities from literally a clump of three grown at really high intensity. And so you just wouldn't believe you could do that with sprouts, but you know, because people say they need so much space, but wow, they have really delivered. And they're now starting to form um, sprout tops, which I'll be harvesting soon. Uh, but for now, I'm just harvesting the outer leaves and you can see the quality of these leaves is just beautiful. And it's been like this for an absolute age right from early spring we've been harvesting these because I actually overwintered the plants to get an early start and when you start taking the sprout tops off the actual sprouts start to develop and so you can see lots of sprouts coming and one more new lettuce bed and this is Grenoble Red again um, and then some hearting lettuces, can't remember what these are called um, and then some more spring onions around the outside so you can see I am starting to get some lettuce <laughs> and uh, hopefully, hopefully I'll get all the way through. Just a quick look at the carrot bed. You can't see very much. If I get a little bit closer, maybe you'll see really nice carrots in there. And it's a decent sized bed, this one. Next year, I'm going to change the way I use it though, because it's such a good bed because it suits the netting and everything really well. I'm actually going to put my winter carrots in here, so I've got a really nice long row of uh, winter carrots because um, I really haven't got very many places suitable for growing winter, for winter. I've got loads of places where I can grow my early season carrots, so yeah, change my mind Steve. A very quick look at Debbie's plot and it's going pretty well we did have onions in that bed but uh, onion fly got those the um, fruit orchard is looking great we've got some lovely apples on here got some sweet corn here which is going on well and we've got some broad beans at the back there herb beds all the way down here Strawberries pretty much finished. Just planted these. Can't remember what they are. Romanesco cauliflowers, I think. Um, her bed going crazy. 
another lovely herb bed sweet corn again it's growing really nicely but it's really nice to have those polytunnel grown ones even though they're outside now because you do get them about a month early New Zealand spinach again growing fantastic it's actually growing here better than it is on my plot but then my plot's been harvested pretty heavily shallots much much smaller than the ones on my plot but these were planted a couple of weeks later beans blotties these finally starting to grow <laughs> it's just been for waited forever here to get beans to grow just cleared this bed here for the uh, purple sprouting broccoli black currants got huge quantities of black currants i can't stand the things but Debbie works some magic and makes some lovely preserves out of them. And then we've got pears. Oh, fabulous harvest of pears coming. And we've got lots of pears at home as well. Really pleased with those. Of course, the globe artichokes look stunning. Chokes are looking pretty good there. It's going to be difficult for Debbie to get in a shed soon. Take a look at Debbie's plot. There's my bike there. It's looking pretty good. <laughs> Just look at these though. These are the French beans. And has anybody got French beans as far behind as this? This is just, they're just crazy. We just haven't, they just haven't grown at all. Uh, bad news here. Horrendous germination on my carrots. Horrendous. And I think it's too late really now to re-sow them. So I just got a very, very patchy little um, crop of carrots there. Probably only get about 20 or 30. And similar sort of story here. Horrendous. It's just, yeah. It's hard to get carrots started at this time of year. I think I'm finding that. Um, Anyway, what's to learn to do carrots better? Onions, again, all multi sown. We like small onions. We like the mix of pickling onions and small storing onions. We think they're still better. And it suits our growing, our cooking because we just don't want big onions. You know, with very few times where we need a, a huge onion, maybe like those. Um, uh, you know, that's kind of what we'd use in a meal, typically. So, you get a huge yield from multi-sowing. And, yeah, we've got red onions all down there. White onions here. I'm a bit surprised to see this, actually, which is an onion going to seed that's grown from seed this year. I think that's the first time I've ever seen that. And actually, looking over there, I see a few few more going to seed as well so just shows if you don't water then uh, they feel the water stress and run to seed so this is my main beetroot bed and I've got, I have got some carrots down the outside here as well I did some carrots on my plot as well which I didn't show you um, uh, some additional ones to the ones that I did show you rather. So a few brassicas here, red cabbages and things like that, all things that will be out of this bed in October time because this bed will all be replanted with field beans. These are my leeks. I think all of those I've taken. So I'm pretty pleased with that. This is the most leeks we've ever grown. So we'll see whether we actually get through this number. We don't eat a huge number of leeks, um, but we grow a few more each year to see if we can eat a few more. And uh, yeah, we'll give it a go, try our hardest. This is the squash bed. It's pretty rampant. There is a lot of squash in here. We pretty much only planted Crown Prince and Trumpuccinos this year not totally by planning slightly by accident because none of the butternut squash actually survived but all the crown prints did beautifully and they're all fantastic i don't know how many we've got in here we've got 25 plants 
every plant has probably got two crown princes on it so in total about 50 crown prints something like that and the runner beans which have been completely overtaken so all of this needs to get cut back a bit um, but this is a trumpuccino and it's got stacks of trumpuccinos on it I'll show you just one of them curl a bit when you grow them on the ground when you grow them um, vert vertically they um, frog in my throat yeah when you grow them vertically uh, they're nice and straight <laughs> just coming through the beans anyway beans finally starting to grow in fact one has actually reached the top I have never grown one of beans this late but I'm sure they'll be fine. Unfortunately, one thing I didn't show you was we've got some runner beans that we grew in the polytunnel. They're outside now, but we've been harvesting those for a week, months, months now. So we're not short of runner beans, but uh, it would be nice to have enough to go into storage. So what have we got here? I don't know exactly, but we've got cauliflowers. We've got uh, this is Aztec broccoli and you basically just pinch this out like this probably when the leaves are a little bit bigger and cook it exactly like you would spinach um, and it's pretty good actually uh, Debbie really likes it I quite like it um, but I'm not a big spinach fan so yeah it's really nice to have a, a source of spinach We've got the New Zealand spinach and we've got this and this will keep us going. We've just planted our first sowing of true spinach again. We don't grow it in the in the height of summer. It just runs to seed straight away. And I've got some red cabbages here which are being eaten pretty badly and I don't think it's caterpillars. So I suspect it's probably cutworm or something. Um, and some cauliflowers and some purple sprouting broccoli and then that which is hard to show you is my main winter cabbage well, winter winter um, brassica bed and it's kale collets sprouts and red cabbages and the nets will be coming off soon because goodness knows what is going on underneath those nets uh, obviously lots of side shoots of calabrese which we've been harvesting but other than that I don't know it's going to be very weedy well actually not that weedy because we've got a nice thick mulch on like we've got on here but yeah there's going to be stuff going on in there and I'll be pleased to get the nets off and they'll stay off permanently now because the plants are pushing on the tops of this and yeah, my experience, best to get them off now and start managing the bed. A little bed of kale in here. This net will come off again soon. And uh, everything does well under nets. All the brassicas do well under nets. And it's not to keep the pests off really, it's just to give them a bit of shade. The apples, believe it or not, we have to, I've actually thinned these apples, but you always miss the odd ones. Try to get them down to two plum tree with one plum on it but then it is only its second year oh, I've taken so many pears off this look, poor little tree and yet there still seems to be way too many on it I'm gonna have to take some more off again more apples a little bit of marking on the skins this year but a lot of these apples will uh, get dehydrated so it, that doesn't really matter and again huge numbers on here and again this has been thinned it's hard to believe it's been thinned really because it's it's just got so many apples on it it needs thinning again but anyway that's it that'll do gherkins more gherkins more sweet corn these are the runner beans here you can see it's just crazy that's just like six plants of runner beans but the number we've had off that is Cucumbers. unbelievable so there we go that's it quick rush really round 
uh, as I said it's late at night now and uh, I want to get home but uh, yeah I just wanted to round up just by saying that you know because we're, we're self-sufficient in veg and, and pretty much self-sufficient in fruit for most of the year um, it's really important to grow a surplus because so many things go wrong and if you if you just you'd have so many shortages well unless you're a better grower than me uh, which probably wouldn't be that difficult but um, yeah I mean yeah we've we've had you know big crop failure with the lettuces with the golden purslane with the runner beans with the French beans you know just loads of things uh, and if we we hadn't kind of diversified because I like to grow multiple different varieties in multiple different places and more than we need and then we give it away uh, at the moment we're growing 10,000 uh, meals a year off uh, the three allotments and the growing area on those three allotments um, mine um, my wife's and one of my daughters uh, is about 250 square meters which is about the size of a full-size plot but obviously you've got to have paths and compost bins and all that water storage and all that um, but yeah 10,000 um, meals and I'm pretty pumped about that really because I've recently been reading about the challenges that we face globally we've got to grow 56 percent more food by 2050 to feed the growing population uh, or even the existing populations eating more and wasting more food uh, so we've got to grow a lot more um, we've got to grow all that extra food uh, whilst reducing the carbon footprint that we use we've got to find something like eight two Indias of space to grow that extra food in um, and that's about 800 square meters per person on the planet today um, and we've got to do all that whilst coping with climate ch adapting to climate change because obviously climate change is happening can't avoid it now so we've got to adapt and we can already see the challenge of adapting to it it's horrendous um, but there's opportunities as well and we've got to not make climate change worse so it's a huge challenge and us gardeners can really make a bit, big difference because when you grow your own food you know you've got no plastic no single-use plastic you're probably using about a 20th of the wet water that a commercial grower uses so really saving water um, there's almost no carbon footprint associated with what you grow because uh, there's no fuel associated with you know equipment if you grow organically there's no uh, artificial fertilizers and all the climate impacts of those so we can really make a big difference for ourselves our families and our friends uh, that we feed with our surpluses so yeah I'm really excited about what we can do to save the planet and so it's you know just make I mean it's great fun as well gardening and it's really fantastic to eat your own food but when you think you're saving the planet at the same time it's even better so anyway happy gardening and i'll see you soon